Hi, I'm Shar Pittman, and welcome to this episode of Woman of Purpose. And today I have with me Wendy Muska. And today's topic, we're going to talk about um, childhood trauma. And I'm really excited about this one because I really believe that a lot of us um, have dealt with or deal with some some form of trauma that really I believe is rooted from childhood. And like Wendy said earlier, before we started and we we're chatting, she said this is a place where people get stuck. And so I'm super excited about um, having my friend and uh, mentor too, <laughs> Miss Wendy Muska with me. Oh, Shar, it's always fun to be here with you. We have so much fun doing this. Yeah, we really do. It really do. is. Yeah. yeah it's... It, the more that we do it, I think the more exciting that it gets mm -hmm. because of the feedback and things that mm -hmm. women really are getting, they really are getting free and they really are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being able to use this as a tool to, um, to just live a great life and be changed, mm -hmm. you know? Great. So this topic that we're talking about, Wendy, one of the mm -hmm. things I messaged you, I don't know, about a month ago, I guess, and mm -hmm. I said, hey, Wendy, what is the thing that is going through, you know, because you're a therapist, mm -hmm. um, what is the one topic that is really kind of a burning topic right now, mm -hmm. things that you've been dealing with, and what mm -hmm. was your answer? Childhood trauma. Childhood trauma. Childhood trauma. Yeah. yeah. And that, that word trauma has just been ringing in my, in my mm -hmm. heart, and it's like that really is... Um, Something that is that's that's dealt with, you know, on a therapist side of mm -hmm. things. But really, I think more people are struggling in an area and don't really understand what it is. And I do mm -hmm. think it could be linked to trauma. Absolutely agree. So, what is your definition, uh, Wendy? What is the definition of trauma? Trauma is anything that has happened in your life that is distressing to you, um, or overwhelms you, or that you don't understand. You haven't processed. No one else really gets to define your trauma. Yeah. I think that's also where a lot of conversations get stuck yeah. is people will talk about, oh, this experience I had and somebody else will say, oh, just get over it. It's no big deal. Yeah. Um, and that's we really we really don't have the right to do that to another person. Yeah. And a lot of time, especially with childhood trauma, sometimes the trauma isn't even really remembered. Mm -hmm. It might be a vague memory, but a lot of the times um, people don't even understand it as trauma. Yeah. Because it happened when they were in these developmental years where they were developing coping skills and ways that they interacted with the world. And because of certain factors that were maybe going on in their childhood that didn't even seem like what we would think of as trauma, like a house fire mm -hmm. or someone being killed in front of them or being in a really gnarly car accident or almost drowning. Those things I think everyone sees as, oh, Boy, right, trauma. Right. I like to think about more of like this covert trauma that's happening mm -hmm. as we're being raised and that we develop these coping skills or ways of interacting with ourself and the world that's based on these formative experiences. But oftentimes we don't have any real true memory of them. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually talk about within that realm also things like sexual abuse when children are so small that they don't really remember all of it or they just remember pieces of it. Um, but trauma encompasses a lot of things. And in my office, it is usually where people are like, I just can't figure out why I keep going around this same tree yeah. or why I'm interacting with people this way. Or sometimes they don't even know to ask a why. Yeah, It's so entrenched in who they are uh -huh. that they don't even think to ask themselves, well, why? What's going on for me? They don't even consider it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like I like what you said. It's like they're stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, they they mm -hmm. go they're going around the same the same mm -hmm. tree, the same mm -hmm. mountain, and it's like and it's not that you're trying to bring them back to their childhood and remember things and do mm -hmm. these kind of weird things, but there mm -hmm. is something that stops us from, you know, from moving forward. Mm -hmm. And and it affects, you know, it affects the relationships and it affects the way that we see things because it really does hinder our perception of of life. And I had mm -hmm. I looked up the, mm -hmm. the the definition just from you know the internet of what trauma was, and it it's the emotional response, mm -hmm. and you know emotions are attached to this thing of trauma, mm -hmm. and so when we've got messed up emotions, and mm -hmm. when we don't know how to like what triggers a lot of I believe a lot of trauma, mm -hmm. you know that mm -hmm. we don't we don't really know that's trauma, mm -hmm. there's those triggers. It's like, why did that trigger me like that? Right. Why did that make me so angry? Or why did that, you know, why did that hurt me? Or why did mm -hmm. I feel that way? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, sometimes like for me, you get that, um, 
like a smell. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. Or like, you know, you go outside like mm -hmm. in the spring, especially mm -hmm. for me, it's like you, the smell of the, the grass or the smell, mm -hmm. it just like, it's like, whoa, it kind of takes you back to, mm -hmm. you know, when you were little and you remember blah, 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 you know, remember, you know, Something good things happened. and bad things, right, you know? Sure. So, um, so there's that. So mm -hmm. what kind of, what kind of, um, like trauma, so what is the, what do you think in, especially in children, what is that, um, that defining, that defining th thing that makes, that provokes trauma, you know? Sure. Well, I think it's usually invalidating experiences. Okay. Unprocessed events. Okay. Events that weren't processed well. Because th these are not like, you know, we talked about the mm -hmm. ones that are like actual trauma. Right. You know, and, but the ones mm -hmm. that are like those subtle things. Right. Yeah. The, the question that, and I'm going to try not to get into too much of the psychoanalysis of it because I don't think most people enjoy that anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> but um, the guiding question that, that I have when I'm working with people is always what's happened to this person that's causing them to act this way. Okay. So most people are trying to do the best they can in the world with what they know and what they've experienced is experienced. And we live out what we've learned mm -hmm. and we learn what we've lived. So when we take that into our experiences of the world, we're, we're playing out what we've lived, but sometimes we're not aware that we're playing out what we've lived. So the, mm -hmm. the question to, that I ask myself often, and it's kind of in the back of my mind mm -hmm. often, is what's happened to this person to cause him or her to act this way? Yeah, That's also a great thing to have in your mind when you're dealing with somebody in your life that's difficult, because <laughs> it really helps you form empathy for that person to say, what's going on for this person that's caused them to act that way? I think oftentimes childhood trauma comes because people are living in an environment where you really can't process trauma. Mm -hmm. It's unsafe. It's too overwhelming. Um, children aren't assisted to process what they're experiencing. There's a lot of withdrawal and sometimes abandonment from the caregivers. Mm -hmm. So they're not, they're not learning how to process the world. Yeah. So they're not being assisted to understand this is what's coming into me. This is my perception of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I want to react in this feeling or in this thought, but the caregiver is unavailable, overly critical, and, and we can get into some more of those lists in a bit here. Um, but children who can't get comfort or assistance and validation in processing what is experiencing, they are experiencing, they tend to withdraw and shut down and a wound is created. Mm -hmm. And because when we get wounded in childhood, we're really unaware of the wound, the wound doesn't heal. Because we are unaware right. that it's there. Yeah. We have learned, we just put it away. We just, we just set it aside. And so it sits there. Um, and so children, and then it comes out as adults, create these unhealthy patterns of responding in the world based on responding to the environment in which they're living. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a very complex process. Right. For sure. I have lots of notes for today because I want to yeah. make sure I hit all my points <laughs> um, because it is complex. Yeah. But I think for most people, it's the idea of um, what I'm what I'm experiencing is not working for me and I'm not completely truly understood why. Yeah. Here's the thing. And I know we're going to get to the healing process, but yeah. I just want to give people a moment. Yeah. When you become aware mm -hmm. and you validate that experience, it breaks your life open. Yeah. Totally yeah. breaks your life open. Yeah. So become aware mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. and then you can deal with it. Then you can deal with it. Yeah. I always say it's mm -hmm. like anything in the dark that is not light is not shed on mm -hmm. has power in your life. For sure. But the minute that it, you do become aware and you bring mm -hmm. it to the light, it's like then it doesn't have power over you. Right. And I love what you said at the beginning. It's that. You know, my trauma might not be your trauma. Like, Absolutely. Like, for me, it caused trauma in my life. But for mm -hmm. you, you'd be like, well, that's just dumb. You know, mm -hmm. get over it. Mm -hmm. But it is. Everybody is different. And mm -hmm. then trauma affects people differently. Mm -hmm. But it, I believe that it does affect everybody to Absolutely. a degree. And it's like the dealing with it when you're a kid. I like what you said about the wound. A wound is created in a kid. But that kid grows up to be an adult. Mm -hmm. That wound is never dealt with. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as parents, you know, we're growing, we're, we are trying to raise what we think is kids, but really we're raising adults. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. And so we, mm -hmm. you know, like if we have uh, parents that are going through their own issues, mm -hmm. 
you know, like in my home, my dad was an alcoholic, you know, and, and so you have all of that rage going on. My mom did all she could do to just try to keep peace in the home and mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And in the process, you know, you know, we're just are not, you know, our needs aren't met. Right. So then you grow up as an adult and mm -hmm. you're living, you know, mm -hmm. through, you know, through a wound created as a child mm -hmm. and not understanding why am I treating people like this? You know, why, you know, why do, why don't I like mm -hmm. men? You know, why do I right. think all men are creeps? Right. Well, you know, because right. I, my wound wasn't healed from my dad mm -hmm. who was wounded as a kid. And, mm -hmm. you know, it goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So those are those generational patterns yes. that we often talk about. We talk yep. about those a lot in church, generational yep. curses and generational patterns. Yep. The, the, one of the best, coolest moments I get to have as a therapist is when people start connecting, oh, I'm acting that way because of what's happened to me. I'm not a bad person. Exactly. That is the moment where they're yes. just like, oh, yep. wow. Yep. I'm not a bad person yep. because oftentimes they've functioned in life in this way where they've taken on these um, messages given yeah. to them as children. Yeah. That then they take on this persona and this idea of themselves as I'm a bad person. Right. And the, those adults really struggle with like emotional intimacy. Yeah. Being close to people. Yeah. They don't want to be close to people right. because they've learned in their childhood being close to people hurts. Hurts. Yeah. But really good relationships are based on emotional vulnerability. Yeah. <laughs> because the more you are known by someone, yeah. the more you can feel accepted by them yeah. and the more you can feel completely unconditionally loved. Yeah. 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 And that's a that's mm -hmm. a really a hard mm -hmm. a hard thing for somebody that was, you know, as a child, mm -hmm. not emotionally tended to. Mm -hmm. And it's no fault on the parents. It's not like blaming the parents for being no. bad parents. It's mm -mm. like we want to make that clear. It's like we're not trying to throw parents under the bus. We're not trying to whatever. It's just mm -hmm. called life, you mm -hmm. know. But understanding, if we don't have an understanding of what trauma is, and a lot of times in the church, a lot of times in the church, we'd like to just throw the Christian blanket over it and say, mm -hmm. you know, well, just know who you are and everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some truth in that. Know who you are mm -hmm. and it will be okay. But we have to identify what the problem is, mm -hmm. identify that there is mm -hmm. trauma. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, in the, in the church, it's kind of like, you know, it's, oh, that's the past, you know, get over the past. Right. Okay, yes, to some degree, but if I'm getting stuck, then there's a root issue mm -hmm. that is causing the problem. Mm -hmm. And we were, um, a, a gal was sharing something the other day and she was talking about her daughter had bought a house and it was an older house and it had um, old piping and there mm -hmm. were some issues in the pipe and they had to, you know, dig through. And they thought that a tree had started growing in this pipe and caused mm -hmm. all these issues. But when they got in there, they realized that it was this little teeny, little teeny thing that had mm -hmm. crack mm -hmm. in the pipe. Mm -hmm. And that this little teeny weed type of a thing was growing. Mm -hmm. Here, it wasn't a big thing at all. Mm -hmm. And when they were talking about it, I thought that is powerful because it's not the big things. No. A lot of times it's the little things. It's that little teeny crack that allows something that to come through and that little teeny weed can pop through and it mm -hmm. can stop a whole, you know, whole water system. Absolutely. And so trauma, I believe, is that mm -hmm. it can be a little teeny seed, that little teeny crack mm -hmm. in our foundation, in our mentality, mm -hmm. in our emotions mm -hmm. that then becomes this great big huge thing. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, being a Christian and being a believer and loving, you know, right. I love people and I'm like you when somebody gets that revelation of like, and you mm -hmm. know, oh my gosh, I'm not a bad person. Mm -hmm. I just, now I realize why I'm behaving badly. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm such a, an advocate for not just throwing a Christian blanket over it. Right. And not just, it's like, we need both. We do. We need to understand <laughs> that do. I had, you know, okay there was a issue in my in my life and i want to deal with the root of it mm -hmm. and there's it's connecting the both it's the the therapist connected with all of it it's just mm -hmm. like then you can help with the tools and it's not just throwing the, a christian blanket basically mm -hmm. over things because we need i think it's so beautiful because god just designed you know right. designed mental health people to help people with mental health right. you and, know and it's a for me at least and i and i know some other 
Christian faith-based therapist that it's like a it's a calling in your yeah, life. Yeah, absolutely. It's the way that my brain works. Yep. I'm not a pastor, mm -hmm. but I think one of the most beautiful things about serving this congregation and just serving the world is that I have pastors in my life that value my role in that. Yeah. And I have a lot of Christians that come to me and say, please don't just tell me to pray more. Exactly. Please, please yeah. don't just give me a Bible right. verse to study. Yep. Help me. Like I don't, it's not breaking free and I want to know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because one of the things that I really believe is that we don't get to choose our childhood. Mm -hmm. We don't. I mean, we're the caregivers we have, the socioeconomic background we have, our caregivers' capabilities, our caregivers' traumas that mm -hmm. they're trying to get through. We don't get to choose that. Right. But our adulthood is all on us. Mm -hmm. Our adulthood gets to be all our success. Yeah. So if you're struggling, please find freedom in whichever way yeah. um, tool that you need, whether it's therapy, whether it's uh, some a lot of other tools that are out there. Um, and and press into that because yeah. Jesus came came to give us joy and give it to us abundantly. Yeah. Yeah. And one of my own guiding um, mantras or meditations meditations this past year, perhaps for me, has been, I want to get back to my original design. Mm. I want to get back to how God designed me to be before the world corrupted Corrupt me. me. Yeah. And that's kind of a that's shorthand really way of saying, God designed us when mm. I was born to be joyful. Right. To be peaceful, right. to love the world, right. to find it exciting, mm -hmm. to say, oh, my gosh, look at the glorious artistry of this world. Yeah. And then as we're going through the world, yeah. corruptions take place to that original right. design right. because sin is in this world, you know, right. and it corrupts me in the way that I perceive myself. Mm -hmm. And we've had lots, lots of talks and I've done lots of talks on we have a relationship with ourselves. We have a way we perceive ourselves, a way we comfort ourselves, a way we validate and understand ourselves. Yeah. And childhood trauma disrupts that 100 yeah. percent because we don't see ourselves clearly. Right. Right. And and with with trauma, mm -hmm. especially as a, a child, it's like we as a as a child. And, I, you know, I know that I've had some childhood trauma and mm -hmm. you've been very mm -hmm. key in helping me get through some of those things and realizing that. And that was my aha moment that, wait a minute, I'm not a bad person, mm -mm. you know, because because of things that were done to me or being in an environment that I was in. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's many watching, too, that have the same thing. But my trauma doesn't identify me. No. And when I realized that, OK, wait a minute, my true design, especially when I'm a, a Christian, is part of my identity is mm -hmm. living life mm -hmm. with peace, living mm -hmm. life with joy. Mm -hmm. And when I understand and can identify that, wait a minute, why am I not, you know, what's, what's going on? It's mm -hmm. like, it's once that comes to light, it's, it doesn't make you like hate people mm -mm. in my, in my life. It didn't mm -hmm. make me hate people. It's like, it helped me see them through different eyes. And I mm -hmm. love what you said as a child, I couldn't help the things that I was raised in, I couldn't help the environment that I was in, I couldn't help any of that because mm -hmm. I was a kid. But as an adult, now I'm responsible. It, yes. I cannot blame my family. What I can do is I can say, how can I be free and how can I get healthy mm -hmm. emotionally? Because if you're not healthy emotionally, mm -hmm. You're not going to be healthy mentally. You're not going to be healthy spiritually, and you're not going to be healthy physically, mm -hmm. even. So that's why this thing of trauma is so, I believe, so super important. Mm -hmm. um, understanding is being aware that there's something that is stopping me from, and it's causing my perspective, my perception of my of my world. Absolutely, you know, right? Because we learn to interpret the world through the through the eyes and perception of the person that interpreted it for us before we could do it for ourselves. Now that's a really big statement. Shar just <laughs> like, double blinked at me. I was like, what, what, what? We learn to yeah. perceive and interpret our world mm -hmm. through the lens, so, and the abilities mm -hmm. of usually our primary caregiver, yep. who is teaching us about the world before we can perceive it for ourselves. Yep. So here's a good example of that. When when you're young, if you're with a caregiver who loves the world, who thinks things are exciting and says, go explore, it's beautiful, like go get muddy, go splash in the mud puddles, go dance in the rain and has that abandon and looks at you and says, oh, boy, I'm sorry that you, it looks like you're feeling pretty sad that we had to stop playing outside in the rain. And I know that really stinks, mm -hmm. but it's time to stop playing in the rain. So it validates your feelings. And when they look at something and you bring it to them and it's a little, 
you know, what was caterpillar, yeah. bring them a little caterpillar and they go, wow, isn't that neat? Look at how, you know, fun it is and furry it is. And that's so cool. That's how you interpret the world. Mm -hmm as this fun, exciting, safe place to explore and become all I can be. Yeah. But if you are with a caregiver, and I, ha I have a list of issues that I've been putting together today or over this last week as in preparation for this, that interacts with you in certain ways, you learn to interact with the world in those ways. Yes. And what they tell you becomes part of what you believe to be your identity. Yes. Yep. And it it trips you up. Mm -hmm. If you have a caregiver that says, oh, don't don't touch things. It's they're dirty. Yeah. Or they say, oh, just you need to just stop. Yeah. Stop hitting your brother. Yeah. But doesn't talk to you about your feelings. You learn to not trust your feelings. Mm -hmm. If they that. So that's where things get stuck. Yeah. Is that's where trauma. Some of that trauma can come from. Yeah. yeah. As, as you're talking, I think about um, this you know, dry, even like driving, mm -hmm. like my family, they were afraid to drive anywhere. Mm -hmm. So like when you got in traffic, you know, you were going to die mm -hmm. because that was just the fear that was placed. And mm -hmm. so, you know, growing up, I never really liked to drive anywhere mm -hmm. because I was afraid of bridges because mm -hmm. my mom was afraid of mm -hmm. bridges or my mom was afraid of traffic mm -hmm. or, you know, there's mm -hmm. so not even I put that on my son mm -hmm. going on roller coasters because I hate roller coasters. Right. So I just mentioned, like, I'm afraid of roller coasters. Then mm -hmm. he was afraid of roller coasters, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, as you're talking, I'm thinking, oh, man. I know. You know. And you know what? As every mom out there is listening to this, they're like, yeah. I need to go to therapy and I need to get perfect and not ever do anything. <laughs> no. That's not yeah. true. No. We're all working through our things. Right. One but of the most empowering things you can do for your adult children yeah. or your children at any age yeah. is look at them and say, I'm really sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry I yeah. did that. I'm sorry my yeah. choices affected you that yeah. way. Because that is process of validating them. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And and again, you know, it, it is just it's just part of part of life. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is, is that when you said earlier is being aware, yes. being aware of it. Mm -hmm. And when we're aware that there's something broken and we can't put our finger on mm -hmm. it, then it's like, you know, a therapist is great. Or maybe you've got a really good friend, mm -hmm. you know, that you can just go to and just say, I, I can I just process some things with you? And mm -hmm. when things are in and kept in the dark, mm -hmm. there's power that that's the thing that has power in your life. But yeah. when we bring things to light and are aware of things, it's like then and then you start seeing things differently, too. Right. Right. So and the only power that deserves any power in your life is the peace that comes from yes, Jesus. Yeah, that's that's where I want to give all my power. Yeah. And I know that I'm in a good space yep. when I am just at peace. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. And that's the goal for everybody. That mm -hmm. is really when we mm -hmm. when we can understand, number one, that you're not your trauma. Number two, that there's nothing wrong with you. And number three, that you can't have freedom. Then it's like the word trauma isn't a bad word. It's mm -mm. kind of like, then we can just, we work through things together right. and then you really can raise your kids or, you know, grandkids or enjoy your adult kids or whatever stage in life that you're in. So right. it is, yeah, it's <clears throat> trauma just becomes a, a word for yeah. events that happen. Yep. So some of the things that is people are listening to this and they're like, oh, okay, well, what's going on with me? Um, always ask yourself, what's happened to me that's causing me to act these certain ways? If you find a way in the, in the world that you're acting that you don't feel good about, saying that to yourself. And I just want to quickly go through some, some that I've kind of put together before okay. we go into our healing part of our podcast. People that sometimes have childhood wounds have experienced caregiver, abandonment, or withdrawal. So kind of that cold caregiver. Um, a not nurture, a very nurturing caregiver a really critical environment. If you grew up, that's probably the thing I see the most. A very critical environment where you never do anything mm -hmm. right. Your thoughts aren't right. Your feelings aren't right. Your perceptions aren't right. Your dreams aren't right. Nothing's right with your caregiver. Mm -hmm. um, that can that can cause so much faultiness and self-perception. A very shaming environment. Everything's your fault. You never do anything right. Belittling. You're so stupid. How come mm -hmm. you have no common sense? Mm -hmm. Conditional love from your caregiver. That re can result in like a, a perfectionist attitude or very people pleasing. And oftentimes we're trying to please the wrong people, mm -hmm. the faulty, toxic people in our life. There are a lot of betrayals in your life, manipulation from your caregivers, consistently invalidating uh, your thoughts and feelings. Um, and uh, just a general perception of like, people don't like me. You mm -hmm. don't like me. No one likes me. I'm not likable. And for sure, those words that caregivers throw at people 
Um, mm -hmm. You're stupid. You're ugly. Those kind of things yeah. that creates trauma for children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that was a lot in this, what it seemed like to be a short session it of uh, the topic of, of trauma, but um, we're going to, we're going to um, continue our episode here on trauma. Um, so if you want to join us again, stay tuned for the next episode as we continue uh, talking about the effects of what trauma and how trauma can affect, um, affect our lives. So stay tuned. Thank you for joining us.